If you live in Canada like how I do, then you've probably seen quite a few Mazda 3s on the road. But this current generation of the 3 has only been with us for about 3 years, since 2019. In that time, however, it's seen quite a few changes, primarily to the powertrain. But its competitors have also seen new changes, mainly in the form of completely new generations. So can the 2022 Mazda 3 still compete against the newest crop of compact cars? Let's go for a drive and find out. The base Mazda 3 comes with a 2.0-liter naturally aspirated 4-cylinder engine. It produces 155 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque. It's an okay engine, but if you have the budget, I recommend you get the 2.5-liter engine that's in this Mazda 3 sedan. It produces 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. Now, it's not going to set any sort of lap records or 0-60 to 60 records, but it is more powerful than a lot of its competitors and it's still pretty fuel efficient. The 2.5 liter engine with front wheel drive and the automatic transmission is rated for 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. By comparison, the 2 liter engine with the automatic transmission and front wheel drive is rated for 8.4 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. So yes, the 2 liter engine is more fuel efficient, but the 2.5 liter is not that far off. Best of all, if you get the Mazda 3 with this 2.5 engine, then you can option it with all wheel drive. Unfortunately then, you do lose the 6 speed manual, and all that you have is the 6 speed automatic. Speaking of which, if you are interested in knowing what the 6 speed manual is like, you can check out that video up here, I did a review of it in the past. As for the 6 speed auto, it's a really good transmission, actually one of the best 6-speed automatics on the market right now, one of the last ones too. The shifts are nice and smooth and they're also quick to change gears, plus the transmission is fast at reacting, whether you use the paddle shifters on the steering wheel or just stab the throttle, the transmission reacts very quickly. But what if you want more power? Well, Mazda thought of you, and that's why they offered the 2.5 engine with a turbocharger. Now, the car produces 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, if you use premium fuel. If you decide to save a bit of money at the pumps, then the engine will produce 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque on regular fuel. But even so, that's quite a lot, and... Yeah, the car really goes with this much power. This is a great engine. There's very little turbo lag, and it picks up right away. Interestingly, if you use regular fuel, then the peak torque figure is reached at 500 RPMs lower than if you were to use premium fuel. So it's reached at just 2000 RPMs instead of 2500 RPMs. This makes the engine feel responsive and have really good pick up and go, especially in everyday city traffic when you're at a stoplight and you want to take off faster than the car next to you. Fuel economy is predictably a little bit worse than with the other two engines, but it's not that bad. The Mazda 3 Sport Turbo is rated for 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. Both the hatch and the sedan have identical city fuel economy figures with this turbo engine, but the sedan has a slightly better highway fuel economy rating of 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers, or 32 miles per gallon. Unfortunately, with this turbo engine, you can only have it with all-wheel drive and the six-speed automatic transmission. You can't have the manual, you can't have it as front-wheel drive, you can't have it as rear-wheel drive. Although, how much fun would that be? A Mazda 3 rear-wheel drive turbo. Mazda, I hope that you're listening. However, one of the main reasons why you would consider the Mazda 3 is for its driving dynamics. 
This is one of the best cars to take on a twisting and winding road for the amount of money that it costs. Sharp and firm steering give the driver confidence to push the Mazda 3 through corners a little bit more quickly than its competitors. Body roll is well controlled by the suspension without having too many jounces after driving over a big bump. G vectoring control momentarily limits engine torque while driving through corners to prevent the body from rolling too much, which in turn maintains traction and provides a smoother drive for occupants. The all-wheel drive system is a blanket of security for those that live in areas where winters are actually winters. In the Turbo Mazda 3, the all-wheel drive system can send enough power to the rear wheels that it can get the back end to step out of line in snowy conditions. Of course, this is with traction control turned off and you're actively trying to get the back end to swing out. With traction and stability control left on and lighter throttle applications, the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive is stable on less than ideal road surfaces. While the Mazda 3 is positioned as more of a sporty car, the ride comfort is not sacrificed. Yes, it is a tiny bit firmer than a comparable compact car from a different manufacturer, but you can still drive over potholes without the fear of shaking your teeth loose. The cabin feels very insulated from the outside world as well. The only noise that is a bit intrusive is road noise on highways that have old and porous asphalt. Now looking at the interior of the Mazda 3, and there is quite a lot of space, at least here in the front. I am 6 foot 4, so I am above average in height, but even so I have plenty of space. Legroom is more than plentiful and I have just enough headroom. This seat though is at its lowest position, so just be aware of that. In the back seats, unfortunately there isn't a whole lot of space, especially behind my own driving position. Now again, I am above average in height, so somebody that's 6 feet tall or maybe 5'11", they'll have more space behind the driver. But even so, the competitors still offer more space in the rear seats. In the trunks, of course, the hatchback offers more cargo volume. Unfortunately, I cannot remember off the top of my head what the different cargo capacities are, so here they are on the screen. Thankfully, at least in the sedan, you can lower those back seats, and the opening is quite a sizable one, so it is usable space. Now getting back to the front, there's only one change that I've noticed with this 2022 model year, from the previous year and that has to do with this piece of leather on the center dashboard. In previous years this leather would match the color of the seats but for 2022 Mazda decided to leave it black. I mean here's what it looks like in a 2021 Mazda 3 and here's what it looks like with white leather instead of red. Looks pretty good doesn't it? Unfortunately with black it just sort of blends in. I much prefer it in the previous years where it's same color as the seats. It's a nice contrast. As for the rest of this interior, it genuinely feels premium for the amount of money that you're paying. All the buttons have very satisfying clicks from the climate controls to the infotainment controls. They are really nice and honestly these are something that you would expect to find in a Mercedes-Benz E-Class, not a $30,000 Mazda 3. So Overall, the interior is still one of the nicest ones out there. Good job, Mazda. The 2022 Mazda 3 sedan starts at $21,400 Canadian, with the Sport costing $1,000 more. In America, it's $2,000 more. This GT sedan with the 2.5 liter engine and front wheel drive costs $31,400 Canadian, while the Mazda 3 Sport GT Turbo with all wheel drive costs $36,700 Canadian. A fully loaded Mazda 3 GT has a lot of the same features that its competitors have. These include heated front seats, heated steering wheel, satellite navigation, sunroof, dual zone automatic climate control, auto high beams, and soft leather upholstery. However, the Mazda 3 GT also has surround view cameras and a head-up display. These are features that very few or no other compact car have in the same price range. The infotainment system was updated with this current generation Mazda 3. Not only does it have modern graphics, but it is faster than the previous generation. It supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wired, but it's no longer a touchscreen. You have to use the rotary knob on the center console or voice commands. 
The infotainment was designed with the rotary knob in mind, so it's easy to navigate around. But using CarPlay or Android Auto with the rotary knob is frustrating. Those apps work much better with a touchscreen. The exterior design hasn't changed much since this generation's introduction in 2019. The Sport has black surrounds on the grille instead of chrome like the sedan, and turbo versions of the three come with standard black alloy wheels. One thing that has changed for the 2022 model year is the turn signal operation. They now fade when they're indicating, just like the Mazda CX-30. As for the flickering, that has to do with the camera's shutter speed, nothing to do with the car itself. As for advanced driver aids or advanced safety features, the base Mazda 3, at least here in Canada, doesn't really have a whole lot on it. It comes standard with blind spot sensors, and that's about it. You have to move up to the mid GS trim in order to get those options. In the United States though, it does come with a lot of advanced driver and safety aids. Lane departure warning, forward collision alert, emergency braking, it has it all. One thing worth mentioning about these advanced driver aids is that some of them don't work quite as well as you were expecting them to, especially with the lane centering system. On highways, it feels like as though it's not really working, even though the icon is on and it's showing me that it can read the lines, but it doesn't feel like it's uh, helping me turn around corners. The Honda Civic and even the Honda Elantra, theirs are much better. So Mazda still has quite a bit of work to do with their advanced driver aids. And finally, for the warranty, it is a three-year, 36,000-mile basic and five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain, in the United States, that is. Here in Canada, the time period is exactly the same, but it is unlimited mileage regardless of which engine you choose in the Mazda 3. So, first and foremost, the Mazda 3 is still the driver's car. None of its competitors can offer the same driving dynamics as the Mazda 3, whether it's with the 2.5 and front-wheel drive or the turbo with all-wheel drive. The interior is one of the nicest ones out there. However, the Honda Civic is hot on its heels. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback to the Mazda 3 is the amount of interior space. It just doesn't really have that much, and the competitors offer more of it. And also, the Mazda 3 is a little bit more pricier and not quite as fuel efficient. But despite all of these drawbacks, the Mazda 3 remains as one of my top three, well, more realistically top two compact cars to get. This and the Civic. But like I said in my other video comparing the Mazda 3 to the new Honda Civic, if you want an all-rounder, Civic is the way to go. But if you want something with great driving dynamics and still have a nice interior, then the Mazda 3 is the one to go for whether it be sedan or hatchback, 2.5 NA, turbo, or even the 2.0-liter. These are great cars. And if you want to know more about either of these two 2022 Mazda 3s, I wrote a more detailed review of them over on my website. You can find those links in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll probably be an SUV next time. Anyway, Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.